The Strengths and Weaknesses of Ethiopia Welcome to this blog and thanks for watching. In this video we shall be taking you to the eastern part of Africa, looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the iconic country of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a landlocked country in the Horn of Africa. It shares borders with Eritrea to the north, Djibouti to the northeast, Somalia to the east, Kenya to the south, South Sudan to the west, and Sudan to the northwest. With over 114 million inhabitants as of 2020, Ethiopia is the most populous landlocked country in the world and the second most populous nation on the African continent after Nigeria. Dear the Explorers, we have two videos on Ethiopia on this channel, which include 10 things you didn't know about Ethiopia and 5 reasons why you absolutely need to visit Ethiopia. Click on the card on your screen to check them out after this one. Ethiopia is a historic and great nation with strengths and weaknesses, and in this video we will explore both in order to make valid judgments on the country. The strengths of the African nation Ethiopia are the internal aspects of the country, either natural or man-made, which helps or fosters the country's growth and progress. The weaknesses on the other hand are internal aspects that hinder the country's improvement and the strikes which make a nation less attractive to investors, foreigners and most importantly its citizens. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. As always, let's begin this video on a good note. The Strengths of Ethiopia Economic Growth Trend Ethiopia has managed to sustain high economic growth over the last decade, despite being a landlocked country, which expanded infrastructure and thereby managing to reduce costs and boosting competitiveness. Economic activity remained strong in 2015, mainly driven by domestic demand. Exports of goods and services decreased with the drop in oil, seed and gold prices and declining revenue from tourism, while imports grew strongly. The manufacturing, construction and agricultural sectors showed strong momentum whilst the services sector, which continues to make the biggest contribution to growth, slowed. According to the IMF, Ethiopia was one of the fastest growing economies in the world, registering over 10% economic growth from 2004 through 2009. It was the fastest growing non-oil-dependent African economy in the years 2007 and 2008, and in 2015, the World Bank highlighted that Ethiopia had witnessed rapid economic growth, with real domestic product growth averaging 10.9% between 2004 and 2014. This growth has not slowed down in recent years as the country continues to progress and reach new growth milestones despite all its challenges. Great Transport System Ethiopia's transport system is one of the best in Africa, with most of its roads paved as compared with other African countries. From land to sea to rail to air, Ethiopia has a basically good system to facilitate its growth, progress and projects. It prides itself with one of the best airlines in Africa, which is not only effective but also efficient to the needs of Ethiopia and other African countries around it. With Addis Ababa Djibouti railway line nearing completion, it involves Ethiopia, Kenya, South Sudan and Ethiopian Airlines. The project developed foreign investment incentive to become internationally competitive. The Ethiopian government has invited foreign investors to provide much needed investment capital and technological capabilities. Upon completion, it will change the face of Ethiopia and give it the facelift it deserves economically, politically and financially. Good Educational System Education in Ethiopia was dominated by the Tewahedo Church for many centuries, until secular education was adopted in the early 1900s. The current system follows school expansion schemes, which are very similar to the system in the rural areas during the 1980s, with an addition of deeper regionalization, providing rural education in students' own languages, starting at the elementary level and with more budget finances allocated to the education sector. The educational system is designed to suit the needs of the country's future plans, hence giving it better results. This has greatly increased the once very low literacy rate of the country, as well as its serves in developmental processes. Political environment remains stable. The death of the Prime Minister Zenawi in 2012, after he had been in office for 21 years, raised concerns about destabilizing political infighting or other tensions. However, events so far indicate that the political environment has remained stable. We all know the value of a stable country to the value of the economy. This stability helps the country propel itself towards progress and growth. Due to how stable the country is, it has several organizations establishing their headquarters in Ethiopia, such as the African Union and more. Great Wildlife 
Ethiopia has 31 endemic species of mammals, and the African wild dog prehistorically had widespread distribution in the territory. The Ethiopian wolf is perhaps the most researched of all the endangered species within Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a global center of avian diversity. To date, more than 856 bird species have been recorded in Ethiopia, 20 of which are endemic to the country. 16 species are endangered or critically endangered. All this variety of wildlife is the reason the country is such a huge touristic destination, which is great for economies' finances. Despite all these good things going on for Ethiopia, the country, however, has its shortcomings. The weaknesses of Ethiopia Its landlocked nature In spite of technological improvements in transport, landlocked developing countries continue to face structural challenges to accessing world markets. As a result, Landlocked countries often lag behind their maritime neighbors in overall development and external trade. These are the issues Ethiopia faces including relatively poor performance of many because of distance from coast. They tend to depend on their neighbors for many activities such as dependence on neighbors' infrastructure, dependence on sound cross-border political relations, dependence on neighbors' peace and stability, and dependence on neighbors' administrative practices. These factors combine to yield different sets of challenges and weaknesses for Ethiopia. Low Foreign Exchange Reserves Ethiopia's foreign exchange shortage is a major problem, which makes it hard for Ethiopia to back up its liabilities and influences its monetary policies. Given it will last for years and will take quite a while to be sorted out, cooperation with the private sector is essential to solve it. It will require remittances from Ethiopia's diasporous communities to increase to start on solving this issue. But given such remittance has drastically fallen for political reasons, it is less likely that this problem will get a solution anytime soon. Ethiopia's recorded average annual economic growth of about 10% for the past decade, the fastest in Africa. But foreign investors and local businesses complain that the severe had currency shortages are stifling the private sector. The IMF said in January that Ethiopia's foreign reserves at the end of the 2016-2017 fiscal year, stood at $3.2 billion, less than what it spends on imports in two months. Given the landlocked country of 100 million people are heavily dependent on imports, it is likely that the reserves will only get depleted in no distant time. Deforestation Ethiopia is one of the eight fundamental and independent centers of origin for cultivated plants in the world. However, Deforestation is a major concern for Ethiopia, as most studies suggest that loss of ferrous contributes to soil erosion, loss of nutrients in the soil, loss of animal habitats, and reduction in biodiversity. At the beginning of the 20th century, about 420,000 kilometers or 35% of Ethiopia's land was covered by trees, but recent research indicates that the forest cover is now approximately 11.9% of the area. Ethiopia loses an estimated 1,410 km square of natural forest each year. Working with a grant of approximately 2.3 million euros, the Ethiopian government recently began training people on reducing erosion and using proper irrigation techniques that do not contribute to deforestation. This project is assisting more than 80 communities. Poor medical or health sector the WHO's 2006 World Health Report gives a figure of 1,936 physicians, which comes to about 2.6 doctors per 100,000 patients. A brain drain associated with globalization is said to affect the country, with many educated professionals leaving Ethiopia for better economic opportunities in the West. Ethiopia's main health problems are said to be communicable or contagious diseases, which worsened by poor sanitation and malnutrition. Over 44 million people do not have access to clean water. These problems are exacerbated by the shortage of trained doctors and nurses and health facilities. The state of public health is considerably better in the cities. Birth rates, infant mortality rates and death rates are lower in cities than in rural areas due to better access to education, medicines and hospitals. The government is actively working to curb this problem but its effects especially in the rural areas can still be felt throughout the country. Vulnerable to weather conditions and changes in world commodity prices Floods have had major effects in Ethiopia at different times and in different locations. In recent decades, major floods outside the normal pattern of flooding have occurred in Ethiopia with increasing frequency. They have been responsible for many deaths of people and livestock and caused damage to homes, livelihoods and infrastructure in many parts of the country. The floods of 2005 and 2006 
were the worst in recent years. In terms of deaths and economic damage in Ethiopia, river floods in Ethiopia generally occur because of intense heavy rain at high altitudes, which results in water flowing down into lowland rivers, which then burst their banks. Unlike flash floods, river floods tend to build up slowly, but they remain for much longer periods. Drought is another weather condition which is not new to many Ethiopians. Climate change is associated with a significant reduction in rainfall and increase in drought that is already apparent in some parts of Ethiopia. Droughts have caused the loss of human life, livestock and property, as well as migration of people. Given more than 85% of the population of Ethiopia are farmers, most of the agriculture in the country is small scale and therefore highly dependent on rainfall and traditional technologies. Drought affects agriculture by damaging crops and decreasing crop yield, which causes food shortages not only in rural areas but also in towns and cities. In the worst periods of drought, there may be widespread famine when the extreme shortage of food results in many deaths. The drought that occurred in 1984 leading to a famine that killed more than 1 million people is still fresh in the memories of many Ethiopians. There you have it, explorers. Those were the strengths and weaknesses of Ethiopia. Thanks for watching this video. If you want us to cover the strengths and weaknesses of any particular country, leave your suggestions in the comments and we will do well to grant your request. Also, if you did enjoy the video, do well to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends.